from Faith Community Church. Welcome to our online midweek Bible study. Well, we're finally here in the final chapter of the book, Last Day's Survival Guide by Rick Renner. For those of you joining us for the first time, this book is a study on the prophetic word that the Apostle Paul gave to the church who would be living in the last of the last days that's found in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, which reads... This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Well, we can certainly see the fulfillment of this prophecy living in the times that we are now in. So how are we to live in light of all of this? How are we to safely navigate through these perilous times and come out victoriously? Chapter 10 of Renner's book gives us this insight. So if you have your copy of The Last Day's Survival Guide by Rick Renner, please open up to page 375. The title of this chapter is How to Victoriously Navigate Last Day's Stormy Weather. You know, several years ago, I was speaking at a woman's conference in Florida, and I shared a message called Navigating Through the Hurricanes of Life. Little did I know then that the Holy Spirit was preparing me to study the very same principles that Renner outlines right here in this chapter of his book. He uses in this chapter the analogy of a hurricane in describing the effects of the spiritual storm coming our way in the last of the last days. Take a look at page 375. Here Renner writes, For us to catch a glimpse of what it may be like to live through a last day's spiritual storm, we do well to consider the patterns and effects of a hurricane. You know, church, interestingly, experts in financial markets today are predicting that an economic hurricane is heading our way and that it is going to have a catastrophic effect and impact worldwide. I share this with you now so that we know that even those, beloved, in the world cannot deny that a hurricane is heading our way. Renner goes on to say, as a hurricane approaches, its impending presence can be felt by the torrent of pounding rain and the rising sea tides that precede it. These raging rains and swelling tides can be sufficiently deadly by themselves, but they are merely symptoms of the real storm that is still gathering strength and preparing to hit land. Church, the lesson for us here is this. 
don't discount what's happening all around the world today, the lawlessness, the intolerance, the injustice and unfairness as if this is how life has always been. Because as bad as it all is right now, the truth is, beloved, there is much worse to come. In his book, Renner explains, just like a hurricane, when the eye passes over a region, we may experience moments of calm as society draws closer and closer to the end of the age. But in those moments, church, we must not presume that the storm has passed. Because on the other side of that eye wall, there is devastating winds and a devastating impact of the storm still to come. Renner writes on page 377, at times we will feel the full force of the turbulent spiritual winds, whereas at other times it will feel like there has been a pause from pressure. This temporary pause will give the incorrect impression that the worst is over. But we must always keep in mind what the Holy Spirit has clearly prophesied, that a dramatic change in society will occur at the end of the age, which will cause the winds of opposition to rise up against the church with serious consequences. So church, let me ask you, what steps are you taking? What steps are you taking personally to be spiritually equipped for what lies ahead? Beloved, we must be prepared to face these coming storms with readiness empowered by God's Holy Spirit. Church, the truth is this. You and I in America, we live in a mission field. Americans have lost their way. Once founded on traditional Christian values, America is no longer, spiritually speaking, a Christian nation. But sadly, it has become a pagan one. So now more than ever, beloved, we need the power, hear me, the power of the Holy Spirit to be God's ministers of reconciliation in order to reach a lost and dying world. And as predicted in the Bible, things will become progressively worse as the day of the Lord approaches. Renner writes on page 378, between now and the time of Jesus's triumphant return, Society will race toward a cataclysmic, cataclysmic collision with end time events. Even now, the spiritual climate is dramatically shifting. Yet you and I have been chosen by God, listen, to live in this crucial hour. And as part of his church, we have a spiritual inheritance to lay hold of that will empower us to live as overcomers in the midst of the storm. As we listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying and prepare ourselves by standing on the promises of God's word, we can expect to experience the empowering strength of the spirit of might upholding us and seeing us through to victory in every situation. So, beloved, what is this spiritual inheritance that we must lay hold of in order to navigate through the spiritual storms we're facing in victory? Church, we must first, first always remember that we have a great cloud of witnesses who have gone before us, who have left for us a legacy of faith to draw from by their shining examples of faith and trust in the Lord church and his word. We could take hold of the very same promises that they stood upon to help them through their trials. Heroes of the faith like Abraham, Moses, Elijah, Daniel, and David, Great men of God like Peter and Paul and Stephen. Women like Deborah and Sarah and Esther and Mary. 
people, beloved, just like us, who faced persecution for their faith, yet were able to stay strong in the midst of their enemies. And many of them, many of them, even to the point of death, remained unwavering and unshakable. Oh, beloved, that you and I would be blessed with this same kind of resolve to endure to the end. Amen? That's why we need strong spiritual mentors in our life, people we can follow as they follow the Lord. Renner poses several questions we need to ask ourselves on page 381. Is there anyone to whom I am close enough to observe this kind of personal victory in their life? Is there a leader whom I respect and admire so greatly that I'd want to emulate their example as an unwavering warrior in the fight of faith and endeavor to be like him in my own walk with Christ? Is there one certain leader producing the type of fruit in their life that I long to see generated in my own life? And if so, who is that leader? Beloved, I want to encourage you, spend time thinking about the answers to these questions. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12 says, Be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Renner explains in his book from the Greek word used for followers here, we get our words, imitate, mimic, and mime. However, the best translation of this word in English, he tells us, is the word actor. Like the way an actor studies a role, beloved, to know deeply the character that they're portraying, we need to study the lives of those who emulate the faith to the point where we can replicate their actions in our own lives. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. As Renner says, we are to intentionally study the deeds, the words, the actions, and thoughts. In other words, how a person who follows the Lord even thinks about life and godliness. So that we can replicate, beloved, with the help of the Holy Spirit, these same virtues in our own life. Church, this is the essence of true discipleship in a believer's life to mimic the life of your teacher. Paul admonished those who followed him in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 and 11, to fully know his doctrine, his manner of life, his purpose, his faith in the Lord, his long-suffering, his patience, persecutions, and afflictions. In other words, church, Paul is telling us here, study my life. And you'll learn how to navigate through the perilous times of these last days. Beloved, Paul's doctrine is sound. It is fully consistent with scripture. And he always, always rightly divides the word of truth. Those who follow the teaching of Paul can build a solid foundation of Christian living. The lesson from Paul that we learn is be Bible literate. I'm going to say it again. Be Bible literate. Know the scriptures and know how to apply them to your life. Live a life worthy of the call whereby you have been called. Renner writes on page 384, Paul's doctrine, what he believed was so powerful and rock solid that it held him together through every circumstance in life, enabling him to withstand all the rains, the floods, and the winds that came against him. Amen? Church, as you and I come into this next year, 
Let's make a quality decision to build a fortress of faith in our lives through Bible literacy, to know what we believe and why we believe it. Let's take hold of the scriptures and build our lives according to its truth. Now, over the next few pages, Renner explains at great length each component of Paul's faith. I want to encourage you, study these out over the next week on your own. We don't have time to get through them, you know, uh, in this session, but it is so worth your while to really study the life of Paul and the actions of Paul, the belief of Paul, the thoughts of Paul, the intentions of Paul, because he said we were to imitate him as he imitated the Lord. So we get to see in the flesh the very actions of our Lord and Savior through Paul. Paul is a very special apostle, beloved. One day maybe we'll study his life together. And and God gave him revelation of his truth like no other. So I want to encourage you, take time to learn at the feet of this great apostle who also had to learn how to walk victoriously through the hurricanes of life. Amen? If you have the book, Last Day's Survival Guide, please turn to page 393. Here, Runner writes about the importance of staying on track. He quotes verse 14 of 2 Timothy chapter 3. After prophesying in great length the signs of a last day's generation and the perilous times the church in these last days would endure, Paul wrote, but continue in the things which you have learned and have been assured of, knowing of whom you have learned them. The Greek word for continue here means to be unwavering and unmoving. It is the picture of one who refuses to budge. Someone who digs in their heels, even under pressure. It is one who will firmly endure and who is immovable, unshakable, and consistent to what he or she believes. Throughout the scriptures, church, we are admonished, listen, to endure to the end, to hold fast, dig in your heels to our confession of faith and cling to these truths and not become willing to ever let them go. These are the marks of a true disciple of Christ, one who will not let go of what they believe and know to be true, of whose belief, listen, leads to life transformation. You know, it's one thing to believe, and it's another thing to believe and have evidence in your life as to what you believe. We need to go for the fruit, beloved. We need to become fruit bearers. We need to live our lives in such a way that it is a reflection of the truth that we live. It's a reflection of the truth that we speak. So there may be areas of our lives where we yet struggle. What I want you to do and what I want us all to do is we need to dig in our heels, cling to the truth, Become unshakable, become unmovable until we see the manifestation of the transformation of that thing happening in our life that makes us more and more into the image of Christ. Amen? Now, after prophesying the devastating character traits that will plague society in the last of the last days in 2 Timothy chapter 3, what Paul teaches next is the bedrock upon which we must be anchored to weather the storms of these perilous times. So if you have your Bibles, take a look at this next verse in 2 Timothy chapter 3. It's a passage we often quote as believers. 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning at verse 16. It says here, All scripture 
is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Beloved, this is the closing word of this prophecy to the church in the last of the last days. And what it shows us is this, our training, our equipping, our completeness all comes from the word of God. Our ability to withstand the storms of life comes from standing on the word of God. As Renner says, the power of God is in the scriptures. God's word is filled with power. He spoke his word and created the heavens and the earth. God's presence is contained, beloved, within the scriptures. When God spoke creation into existence, his power was released. The word of God, beloved, is life giving and life changing. Hebrews chapter four, verse 12 tells us, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. Beloved, God's word is our navigation tool through these perilous times. His word, beloved, causes us to be fixed and established regardless of the winds of adversity that blow all around us. Church, if we're going to walk in victory through the last of the last days, we must be anchored, hear me, anchored to the word of God. The word of God can literally change the atmosphere around you when you cling to it. Like a musical instrument, beloved, the word of God can release the sounds of heaven into your life. Be sure to read Renner's inspiring notes on page 402 of the book, Last Day's Survival Guide, under the heading, The Music of Heaven. A quote from these notes on page 403 reads like this. The word of God can still release the sounds of heaven in your life. When the breath of God in the scriptures is received, embraced, and acted upon, that pneuma, and that's the Greek word for power, can begin to produce beautiful new sounds in your life that supersede all the old sounds you've been hearing. How many of you have experienced that? Oh boy, I know I have. I know when I have appropriated the word of God in my thoughts, in my, to my memory, as I'm uh, meditating on the word, the atmosphere all around me begins to change. Beloved, there's power in the word of God. Darkness flees when the entrance of God's word brings light. Amen. Beloved, light always, always dispels the darkness. The word of God, church, is a direct threat to Satan's kingdom. And for this reason, the end of the age is going to be riddled with darkness and deception where Satan uses false teachers and false prophets to twist and pervert God's truth. That's why, again, church, I can't stress it enough. We need to be Bible literate if we're going to come out victorious during these last of the last days. You're not going to make it any other way. Can I just tell you honestly? You can't have a casual believing during these times. It's not going to be enough. You have to sell out to Jesus completely and fully and sell out to his word and the study of his word. Amen. Listen to what Renna wrote on page 408. The Bible is not just a book like any other book. The Bible is a book that actually contains God himself. 
Don't you just love that? What does that mean? Beloved, God did not just breathe on the scriptures. He breathed into them. When God breathed out the scriptures, every word, every paragraph, every part of it was infused with his divine presence. Amen. Church, as Renner says, there is not a word in the Bible that is void of the presence and power of God. The Gospel of John tells us in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The power of God, beloved, was realized in the flesh through the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the word incarnate, the word alive, the word embodied, the word personified, the word come to life. And this Jesus, this living word, beloved, abides within the heart of every believer born again of his spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, give God praise tonight. Lord, we honor you and we praise you. We thank you for who you are. You are the word of life. You are the giver of life. Oh, Lord, how we love you. How we love to praise your name. Thank you for giving us this promise in your word, Lord. Thank you for showing us this prophetic truth, Father and enabling us and equipping us and empowering us to navigate through these storms victoriously. Father, nothing can separate us from your love, not height, nor depth, nor death. Nothing, Lord, nothing is going to separate us from your love. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you are with us, that you never forsake us. Oh, Father, we thank you that you are our anchor in the storm. So we cling to you, Lord Jesus. We hold fast to you. And we ask you to be the commander in chief of our life, the Lord of our life. We make room for you, for we know you are already Lord. So we just allow by our will to give you full reign in our hearts, in our minds. Teach us as you taught Paul, Lord God, as you taught Peter, as you taught John, as you taught Mary, teach us, Lord. Teach us of your ways that we may walk in the truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Ooh, this message preached me happy. I hope it did for you too. Wow, you know, we're just got one half of the chapter left and we're gonna finish it up next Wednesday night right here at 7.30 p.m. So I wanna encourage you, make sure you hear the closing message because it's going to have great insight in helping us navigate through the storms of life in these perilous times, amen, amen. Well, beloved, I'm so grateful for each and every one of you joining with us each and every week. You have been such a blessing and encouragement to all of us here at Faith CC. I want you to know on behalf of Pastor Gary, myself, and all the elders here at Faith Community Church, we're so grateful for your continued faithfulness and support to our church and our ministry. You help us keep the wine flowing from the table. Uh, that's a teaching in and of itself. One day, maybe I'll get to teach that to you. But, you know, in context, I just want you to know what it means. It means that you are the ones that help us nurture the others in our flock by your faithfulness and your support. And um, for those of you who would like to give tonight, I want to make it available to you by you following the link we provide below, or you could text the word give to the number we provide below. If you're watching on our online station, you could just uh, touch the give button and uh, access our secure online giving platform that way. We want you to know we're so grateful for you. You have been absolutely awesome and wonderful, and we know that you are a gift to us and that God has brought us together for such a time as this to see the kingdom go forward, to advance his kingdom, to preach his gospel, and to see captives set free. Amen? Amen. 
Well, God bless you, beloved. I want to encourage you. Join us this Sunday, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. We have our Sunday service. I want to encourage you. Bring out the kids at 11 a.m. We have a wonderful children's ministry, and they get ministry. They're not entertained. They're not babysat. They are taught the Word of God. So we want to encourage you to bring your kids out as well. Amen. On behalf of all of us here at Faith Community Church, as we're entering soon this blessed Christmas season, I want you to know I love you. God bless you. And Pastor and I and Gary, Pastor Gary and I, not and Gary, Pastor Gary and I extend our hearts to you. I want you to know we're here for you through every storm. We love you. God bless you, beloved. I'll see you next week.